Good morning, everyone. And spring has sprung. We're glad to have all of you here. God has especially brought you here for a purpose, to be 
refreshed with his word and, and the sacrament of Holy Communion. We have a few announcements we need to take care of before we get underway. Uh, I'm holding in my hand a sign-up sheet for the upcoming month of April. If you'd like to serve as a greeter at either of the 8.30 or 11 o'clock services or as a reader of the lessons, this is the sign-up sheet in which you put your name. It'll be on the bulletin board after the service this morning. We would appreciate your help. I hold in my hand a poster from the North Dakota Right to Life. They're having a, a banquet this coming uh, April 7th at the Hilton Garden Inn. And if you'd like to attend this banquet, please contact Gloria Bethke. You can call our church office if you need uh, the phone number for Gloria. That's the North Dakota Right to Life banquet coming up. Uh, we have also Easter coming up in about a little less than a month. I have an Easter plant donation form. There are a number of these on the bulletin board. If you'd like to sponsor an Easter plant in honor or memory of someone, fill out the form that you find in the bulletin board. Well, one more thing I have to bring to your attention, and that's the portal of prayer for the upcoming quarter, April, May, and June. This is the medium size. There are larger uh, and there are smaller, so they're in the literature rack uh, near the church office. Gary Bethke would like to share a little information on Feed My Starving Children. Good morning. Our community, along with Emmanuel, has been raising funds to pay for food, which are, we are going to pack in, later in April. We need to raise $89,000. We're at about 36000 but that's about average, I guess, so we're right on track. But in April 26th, 27th, and 28th, we're looking for volunteers to help pack the food. Now, if you've never done this, it's quite an experience. This is our ninth year. I've done it all eight. I've enjoyed it every time. Now, it's a little different this time. This time, it's going to be done at Bincota Electric, the new building out on 32nd South. Just keep going. It's on your left. And I'll get more information to you as the time gets closer. Uh, but right now, you can sign up to volunteer. Uh, on March 7th, our church and other community churches were given uh, access to, to sign up groups. So I've signed up three different groups from Emmanuel. Uh, Emmanuel 1, Emmanuel 2, Emmanuel 3. I made it real creative. Now, to sign up, I have information on the bulletin board of the church. It's a pink a little set of steps to go through. And I have it. There's one in the center post, and there's one on the mission board. I'd suggest you take your phone and take a picture of it. Uh, it's pretty simple to do, but if I have to go through it step by step, it sounds long. But if you take a picture of it, it's pretty simple to do. Uh, if you've done it before and you, you just went, feed my starving children, I'll sign up. It says they're all full. Well, they're all full because groups like mine, we were, we were able to choose 60 slots. Well, they all chose 60 and they filled them all out. But... You can get into one of the groups. There's one on Friday, one on Saturday, one on Sunday. The information is on that pink sheet in those three different locations. So we're looking forward to uh, helping our community get this food out to the people. So it's at Mincota. I'll get more information out to you later. But take your phone or your computer. Sign up if you need any help. Give me a jingle. I'll help you. Uh, enjoy your beautiful spring day. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Our choir will start us off this morning with singing Just As I Am.
invite you to stand in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen. Almighty God you take no pleasure in the death of the wicked therefore we turn to you father in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ Father, your voice of truth confronts us in our sin. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. Your Son stands as the watchman over your house, calling us to repentance and faith. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. Your Spirit leads us to acknowledge our rebellion against you, so that confessing our sins, we might receive your pardon and peace. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy. Be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Please be seated for the readings. The prophet serves as a watchman for the house of Israel. The Old Testament reading is from Ezekiel chapter 33. So you, son of man, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from his way, that wicked person shall die in his iniquity. But his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, that person shall die in his iniquity, but you will have delivered your soul. And you, son of man, say to the house of Israel, Thus you have said, Surely our transgressions and our sins are upon us, and we rot away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, As I live, declares the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? And you, son of man, say to your people, the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him when he transgresses. And as for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall by it when he turns from his wickedness. And the righteous shall not be able to live by his righteousness when he sins. Though I say to the righteous that he shall surely live, yet if he trusts in his righteousness and does injustice, none of his righteous deeds shall be remembered. But in his injustice that he has done, he shall die. Again, though I say to the wicked, you shall surely die. Yet if he turns from his sin and does what is just and right, if the wicked restores the pledge, gives back what he has taken by robbery, and walks in the statutes of life, not doing injustice, he shall surely live. He shall not die. None of the sins that he has committed shall be remembered against him. He has done what is just and right. He shall surely live. Yet your people say, the way of the Lord is not just, when it is their own way that is not just. When the righteous turns from his righteousness and does injustice, he shall die for it. And when the wicked turns from his wickedness and does what is just and right, he shall live by this. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not just. O house of Israel, I will judge each of you according to his ways. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our faithful God provides the way of escape to help us endure our trials and temptations. The epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 
For I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, with most of them God was not pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things took place as examples for us, that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them were, as it is written, The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did and were destroyed by serpents, nor grumble as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now these things happened to them as an example, but they were written down for our instruction on whom the end of the ages has come. Therefore, let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape, that you may be able to endure it. This is the word of the Lord. We stand to hear the Gospel reading, the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. There were some present at that very time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he answered them, do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered in this way? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish or those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them. Do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others who lived in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And he told them this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. And he said to the vine dresser, Look, for three years now I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and I find none cut it down. Why should it use up the ground? And he answered him, Sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around and put on manure. Then if it should bear fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated.
grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Do those words sound familiar? You may have to recall back a few years, maybe when you were a young child or a teenager, but you can't tell me what to do. It's my life. How many of our fathers and mothers heard those words or grandparents heard those words from our parents? You know, back in the good old days when we thought we knew better than they did, they were old-fashioned. They were out of touch, fuddy duddies. They didn't want us to have any fun, did they? Well, the Bible says we are not our own. It's not up to us how we use our bodies. We belong to God. You know, we've been created to serve Him and Him alone. It's important that we remember this because we, well, the truth be told, often live as though we belong to ourselves, as if it's our money, our possessions, even our life, and we can do with it as we very well please. Well, Jesus had something different to say about that in our gospel lesson this morning. It points to the danger in such sinfully selfish thinking. He tells a parable, a story that teaches us about heavenly truths using understandable, ordinary, day-to-day -day object lessons. He says, a man planted a fig tree in his vineyard. First of all, who is the man that planted the fig tree? And this represents God, the Father who planted the tree and the vineyard. And you probably already know that that fig tree represents us, you and I and all believers. Like all those other plants in the vineyard, we were planted by God when he created faith in our heart by means of the gospel. We were baptized with water and the Holy Spirit began to live and work in us. We're all members of this body of Christ known as the Christian church. And just as a fig tree is planted for a specific purpose, and that purpose is to what? Produce figs. Each of us have been planted with faith in our hearts to bear fruit for God. Jesus goes on to say, the owner of this vineyard, the man who planted this fruit tree, or fig tree, went to look for fruit. And it's obvious that's why he planted it so that he would get a harvest. He expects it of the fig tree. And so it is with our Heavenly Father. He has every right to expect fruit, good fruit from us. Why? Well, as St. Paul says, for we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has prepared in advance for us to do. And just what kind of good fruit is God looking for? Well, again, St. Paul summarizes it like this. The fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. In other words, God looks for evidence in us that we rejoice in his gift of righteousness and forgiveness and salvation. The fruits of faith are like, well, it, it's like being Christ-like in our attitudes, our actions, our thoughts, and our prayers. Living a life of love for God and for others in response to God's love for us, scriptures say, be imitators of God. Therefore, just as dearly loved children and live a life of love, just as Christ lived and loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you, there must be no hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or greed because these are improper. These are not fitting for God's people. Nor should there be any obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which, again, are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. That's the fruit God's looking for. God has every reason to expect fruits of faith from us. Why? Because he created us for this purpose. He bought us back with the blood of his dear son, Jesus Christ. He redeemed us for this purpose. And just as the genetic code or the DNA of a fig tree causes it to produce figs, so also should the spiritual DNA of a believer produce in him or her good fruit. Now, if we don't produce fruit, we don't do it to save ourselves from judgment. We can't produce enough good fruit. Our fruit in and of ourselves is rotten. 
because we're sinners. But Jesus Christ has won that salvation for us. He's accomplished that. So the fruit that we produce is because we are God's holy people who have been washed clean from our sins and reborn through the water of baptism. Now that fig tree that Jesus talks about with no fruit represents the person who exhibits no fruit of faith. Well, what does such a person look like? Well, since he or she has no fruit of faith, we might imagine an obviously sinful person, just a horrendous person. But you know, that might not always be the case, that someone is always such an obvious, blatant sinner. Recall the fig tree that Jesus cursed on another occasion? It looked healthy. It was in the right season. The bear figs, it should have had them, but it didn't. Only closer observation proved otherwise. The same is true of the fruitless Christian. And only God can really tell who is truly fruitless because only God can know the heart. Adam and Eve's sons, Cain and Abel, well, they both offered their sacrifices to the Lord. From all outward appearances, we aren't able to tell the difference between these two men and their devotion to God. But God, we're told, rejected Cain's offering. And he accepted Abel's. Why was that? Well, the Bible says that Abel, Abel's offering was the fruit of faith, not so with Cain's. Well, then, if Cain didn't believe, why did he even offer a sacrifice? Who knows? Maybe it was out of sense of obligation, or maybe it was somehow to earn God's favor, or maybe it was simply thoughtless. The truth is, we don't know why he offered his offering to the Lord, but what we do know, that it was not out of the fruit of faith. We know this because God's word says so. So what does a fruitless fig tree look like? It could be the most outwardly generous person that you know, or it could be someone who's using God's grace as a license to cover their sin. In other words, the fruitless fig tree could look like anyone. Only God, again, knows the heart of every person. And so this morning, Jesus' warning is not for the person seated alongside of us, not only for the person ahead of you or behind you, it's also for each of us, for all of us, because God wants each of us to seriously consider our way. Jesus continues in the parable. He, the vineyard owner says to the man who took care of this vineyard, for three long years, I've been coming to check for fruit on this fig tree, and I've been saddened every time I can't find any time to cut it down why does it even use up the ground it's a waste of space now notice God's patience in this parable but even God's patience has its limits as we heard in the Old Testament reading this morning the believer in question is showing himself to really be an unbeliever it's as if somehow he altered or manipulated his DNA his spiritual purpose He's no longer that which God declared him to be. There's no fruit on his tree. Therefore, he must be spiritually dead. And what use is a tree in an orchard that bears no fruit? None. It just uses up the soil, takes nutrition and water away from the other roots of other trees. And just as any gardener among us knows that you don't want weeds growing alongside of plants because they actually hinder the fruitfulness of what's planted, so also the fruitless person who has lost faith may hurt and hinder other Christians from being fruitful. And that's why in our parable, God threatens to cut down such a tree and remove it from his garden, to remove the unfruitful and thus unfaithful person from the church. Tough question coming. Does this parable bother you in the slightest or make you at least a little uncomfortable? If so, it's because Jesus wants each of us to consider our relationship to God. Again, we belong to him, not to the world, not to ourselves, to him. And he has every right to expect good fruit from us. I have to admit that when I look at my life, I see that I have not always lived up to God's glory. And so I ask him to forgive me of my sins. And his complete forgiveness flows over me and encourages me to live for him. Does this parable have that same effect on you as well? We all have a wonderful, marvelous Savior who loves us and works in all things for our good, as we see and hear in the rest of the parable. 
Jesus continues saying, Sir, the man replied to the owner, the one who planted the fig tree, leave it alone for just one more year and I'll dig around it and I'll fertilize it. And if it bears fruit next year, fine, good. If not, then cut it down. Here's the main character in the parable, the vine dresser, the caretaker of that vineyard, the one who pleads to the owner, give it a little bit more time. I'll see what I can do, and maybe it will bear fruit. That's our Lord Jesus. He will do all that he can to revive the dead faith in the heart of the person who's lost it. How does he do that? With what tools does he use? Well, he uses the pruning shears of his word, of the law, to cut away the selfishness and sinfulness and callousness of our heart. He tears away those layers of sinful pride that we've built up, and then he fertilizes us with his love, and he waters us with his gospel. He shows us how he kept the law perfectly for us and thereby won our righteousness when he died on the cross for our sins. His sacrificial death covers it all. And he reminds us of his sacrifice every time we receive his very body and blood in the sacrament of Holy Communion. Why does he do that? So that we are reminded of his love. And as he gives us these things, he says to us, believe in me, I've forgiven you. I've paid the price entirely for you. Why? Because my Father and I love you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the good news is that we're so blessed by God's love that stirs repentance, strengthens faith, and nourishes us in every way so that we might produce those fruits of faith. In Jesus' name, to his glory, amen. May the peace of God, which passes our human understanding, keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ unto life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to join me as we confess our belief in using the Lord's Prayer. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope. We confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Father, we give you thanks and praise for sending your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, into this world to bear our sins and be our Savior. In your great love for all who dwell in your house, you appoint pastors, teachers, and other servants of your word who call us to repentance and faith. O Lord, your eye is always on your creation. Grant that our land be fruitful because of your faithfulness. Bless all those who labor as you give us strength for the fulfillment of our daily callings. Healer of the broken, work mightily in the lives of all who experience hardships in their health, including those listed in our bulletins. To that list we add Sandy Zaleski, 
Leonard Wolfgram, the grandfather of Alex Shanelek, Maureen Dries, Joyce Idy, the mother of Kyle Peppard, Doris Roy. We also pray for the victims of the flooding in the central part of our country. And Holy Spirit, we ask you to provide comfort and reassurance to the family of Rosie Charbonneau, who was the sister of Dolores Hughes. Grant that all who ask for healing mercies lift up their eyes to you, the watchmen of our bodies and souls, and find peace in knowing that your face is shining upon them. Lord, in your mercy. Into your loving hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. stand as we continue now with the celebration of the Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, 
Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you've had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. O oh Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Please be seated.
I invite you to stand as we continue now with the post-communion thanksgiving. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, that we may forever dwell under the watchful eye of our watchman and Savior, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord who watches over us. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. We close with Rock of Ages. Thank you. 
hearts don't deserve your glory, still you show a love we cannot afford. straining from the way my heart no longer can keep from singing all that is within me Christ for you alone before if I and you God with us Such a tiny offering compared to Calvary. Nevertheless, we lay it at your feet. Such a tiny offering compared. Thank you so